Yes, sir. So, BDL about to be back, so figured I'd finally put this um, recap video out um, of the team. Let me just talk a little bit about what I liked about the team, what I didn't like, what I probably could have did better, and then what I plan on doing better for the next draft. Um, so, I mean, I kind of would say I, I like I would split this team up into like three portions um the three the theme was the canto birds the core I'd say would be Seismato, Kangas Khan, Klefti, Ten Tangela and then just the uh, you know uti utility mons I guess you can say like Porygon Z, Mushana, Macho and Duck Trio Kinda, they cut their roles on the team with kinda, um, like they usually just had like a specific role on the team or in a matchup. Um, but yeah, to start off with, like the Canto Birds, um, they did like way better than I thought they would be. Um, or at least. Moltres got a line out of Kuno side. Zapdos, I knew was gonna be good, was gonna be a threat. Um, it's very strong, has okay, you know, the speed tears up there. Um, not the highest, but not bad. Um, and it's it lives hits like it tanks some hits. Um, so it did actually very well, especially in the early part. I do wish I used it. Um, more or at least better towards the end of the season but it was just like I was my biggest problem that season was I got comfortable um like I had a hyper offense um play style that was definitely doing good and then I got comfortable with it um cause it was doing so well um, and it was hard to to to, to challenge, how hard to really prep for, um, because it was just s like it was so much threats, really. Um, but like, yeah, it was at those Moltres. I didn't know how to use it at the beginning of the season, um, but then I just started kind of throwing it out there towards the end, and did surprisingly well. Like, it just shot in terms of kills like Seismitoad and Kangaskhan was holding the kills title on the team and then Moltres just came out of nowhere and just took the second um second highest kills on the team um but it's, it's actually like very well um like very good very good just didn't know how to use it and then Articuno was the I think it was like the best sleeper of the whole draft. Like Articuno, like I wasn't expecting it to be such a threat that it was. Um, having Scarf and Triple Axel is what really did it wonders for me. Because um, Triple Axel is really like just a great move. It's actually like. To, to balance it out, it's actually good that they made it so that it can miss because triple actual is like crazy strong. Like, I think when I was doing prep with um against Gert's team, triple actual was doing, I don't, I think it was, I think I had it banded and it could kill. Um, what's that? what is it? Gigalith. It was either it could kill Gigalith or it could like it was like a roll to kill Gigalith or something like that. And it's like the, in my head, I'm like, yo, <laughs> Gigalith it has it's not a super effective move against it, and it has a lot of defense. And Articuno, I think it has a higher special attack. So I'm like, oh, okay, Triple Axel is actually a problem, but. Yeah, it's, it had, like, 
Articuno was definitely good. It was a it was a offensive deck, and it was good for speed control on the team. Definitely bulky as well, like the tank hits. Um, and what was good about it, like the the Canto Birds is like, of course they added the rock weakness to the team, the crazy rock weakness, especially for Articuno. But it's like, I think the best rock move for VGC is Rock Slide. That's the most used rock move, but you know, it can miss, you know? So you're gonna be kind of hesitant to go for it. Um, so I think that's what, like, it's not necessarily like a, it's not, you, like, not every, every man is gonna have rock slide you know what i'm saying on the team so or even like a, a rock move on the team like rock rock typing isn't exactly one of the most you know like utilized or at least for what i'm saying is for stab um so that was actually good so um and then to the core of the team size and to kangas khan klefki and Tangela, like the tank, um, the Klefki Seismotoad combo is actually kind of disrespectful <laughs> because you're putting up the rain dance that's gonna uh, protect Klefki from a fire type move. Um, Seismotoad is already strong against um, fire type moves, and then you're getting the Swift Swim for the speed, um, speed control. And then you're throwing out a stab, muddy water that's hitting two months. That's kind of disrespectful, especially if you throw a life orb or um, choice specs on Sizen Toad. You're doing crazy damage. Um, and then, of course, having a ground type move is, you know, is great, but it's ground stab. So, um, Sizen Toad was always a threat. I, oh, I wanted to go with um, physical, but I just never, like, special size and tool was just so, it, the moves it had was just so, um, so much better and so much useful, especially in the matchups, that there was no reason for me to go physical. Um, and it did enough damage and it was bulky. I only had to worry about a grass type move, which of course, you know, four times weakness, but if, um, it had enough damage output that I didn't need to throw a life orb on there. I could just go with the Rindo Berry and just tank a hit right quick. Um, but like, yeah, that was so like, like very good. And then with that combo, if I throw a Shukuberry or a Air Balloon on Klefki, it's just like that's all its weaknesses covered right there, you know. And it's already um bulky. And it can just add to the bulk with screens and like that's just like that combo right there was just like amazing for the um team and hard to deal with. And then you throw a Kangaskhan next to it, that's just gonna throw out that fake out <laughs> and then just throwing out one forty um plus stab attacks. Don't gotta worry about accuracy or nothing. Angus Khan was actually disrespectful. Like, I use it for the most part. I use it as just a last resort bot, but that's something that you have to respect, you know. So every team had to respect that, and it's just like the only way you're killing it, you know, the, or at least the the best and most effective way to kill it is going to be to throw out a close close combat. Um. But then you you know what I'm saying because fighting is its only weakness. Um, but then it's like if I have a chopper berry on you, I'm tanking that close combat, and then you're gonna get your the defense drop, and then that last resort is gonna smoke your bull. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying like that. Like Kang was crazy too. Is if I'm not mistaken, four mods that I had. Um, Got boosted up a tier. Um, Tangela, Seismito, Kangaskhan, and Articuno. All got boosted up a tier. 
because they were actually, you know what I'm saying, sleepers, like super sleepers. Um, yeah, and then Tangela was, in my opinion, is a top 10 um, man in this format. Like, with the Evo Light Super Bowl, it's living. Like, and if you put max health, max special defense, it's able to tank, um, it's able to tank a special move, usually. Depending on the, the, the man, of course, it can most likely take, tank a special hit. Um, and then it's just like with Tank Ellen, you just had to respect it because it's throwing out the leech seeds. Um, it can rage powder, and you got to worry about the sleep. You had to, like, you had to respect it. And it's just like me, I just like the team was, was, was really amazing. I feel like I got, I let the team down because I got so comfortable. Um, and I didn't kind of, like, I didn't really continue to explore my other options. I just went with hyper offense. You got to worry about this, got to worry about this. And it was working, but it's not going to work every time. Especially, you know, um, where it came into situations where it was just like literally RNG saving in a lot of these situations. Um... But like, yeah, Tangela, like the though that core right there, you just had to respect those options, um, and just play around those, and just hope that you know whatever else I have, um, just isn't enough. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then it goes with like Porygon Z, Mushana, uh, Macho, and Doug Trio. Those mods, I like like them a lot. Like Macho. I felt like I didn't need to have Evo Light on it because you know I was definitely putting Evo Light on Tangela every every go. And my choke, I felt like I could have ran um, Guts um, with the Flame Orb, or even just put Sash on it and just run um, Dynamic Punch for Confusions. Um, but like I said, I really got comfortable with like the core of the team, so I didn't really utilize like Duck Trio, Porygon Z, and Mushana Macho. Um, but I really like them. Um, Mushana, super bulky. That was my trick room option. Um, and then it was there was actually a tech I wanted to run with um, Fling into Weakness Policy, M Mushana, <laughs> which would have been kind of disrespectful um, if I you know, if I, but it was just like my problem with how I prep is that I kind of prep like my opponent thinks like me. So oftentimes I wouldn't run a specific tech because I'd assume that the opponent is going to have something crazy to stop that. Like they're going to have exactly what they need and they're going to ex do exactly what they need to do to stop it. Um, I need to start taking more chances for sure. Like even with the reads because um, like it, whenever I play, I always like I say to myself exactly what the opponent is going to do or has to do. Like I'd say his only way to win. <laughs> But I wouldn't combat it. And, you know, that's just something, like, I got to work on. Especially going into next season. Um, but, yeah, I do, like, Porygon Z was for more. Like, I have ended up picking it up. Which is actually, like, thinking back on it, I most likely should have just kept Bronze on. Um, but with Bronze on, I just didn't know how to use it. I just couldn't really see how to fully utilize it. Felt like I wasn't doing enough with it. Um, so I just wanted to trade it out for some initial damage. That's, you know, they got to worry about. Um, so that's why I went with the Porygon Z. Definitely could have used a lot, utilized it more or better. Um, Doug Trio did 
very well in the first game, and I think I brought it only one time after that. Ooh, Duck Trio, what I liked was it was um, great instant offense, and it paired well with all the birds and Tangela, which was very good. What I didn't like, which is why I didn't utilize it more, was the fact that it's super weak. <laughs> like, it was just super weak. I was just like, yeah. Oh, you know, I, like, yeah, it's just it's gonna die if somebody blows on it. So I'm like, yeah, let me just not use it. Um, even though I forgot which coach it was that had the uh, Alolan version and it was smoking boots and living, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> you know, in my head, I'd be like, you know what? His duck trio is living, so let me give it a shot. But then I'm doing prep and I'm like, I'll find something else. I'm like, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Um, yeah, but that was really the team. The team, like, or at least how I utilized it, was very hyper offense. Um, it, even though it was, it had the potential to be very bulky, and in, in often situations, it was bulky, um, which was very bad for the, uh, the opposing team. Um, but like, I could have like, where my losses really came in was when I was in a situation where I didn't have enough offense to um, completely take out some of the biggest threats on the other team. So then that would put the, um, that would give the other team chance to either take out one of mine or even, you know, live and set up which was very, then, you know what I'm saying, Joe, just that right there would kind of tip the scale into the opponent's favor. And then I'd only win through RNG. Like, you know, like, even though, like, of course I did play well, I did, you know, pick the right moves to use at the end of the day. RNG definitely did help me a lot <laughs> in those um, cases, in those scenarios, which, didn't really like, you know, definitely want to have a more cleaner victory next season. Um, but, like, yeah, I feel like my biggest problem this season was I got comfortable. And I didn't completely use the team how it could have been used in terms of just, like, not going with the hyper offense and kind of just like, you know, negating, like doing, you know, damage reduction and utilizing trick room more and things like that, or at least stopping trick room, which was because I didn't like trick room. I hate trick room personally. Don't like trick room. I'm trying to get into it, but I don't like trick room at all. Um, but yeah, I think next season, I'm going to go for because what I lacked in this team I think was um, speed control like or at least better speed control um, yeah I think that's really was one of my biggest um, things lack of better speed control and then like I think Intimidate would have done this team justice um yeah would have done this team justice for sure um I think next next go around I'm going for more Probably gonna go for a more. I don't want to say stally, but a more bulky kind of team with that same instant hyper offensive threat. I'm gonna try to balance it out more. Yeah, yeah, man. Here we go. That's just the the little recap. I didn't want to go too too long. It already went. Crazy long, but yeah, I'm gonna just 
And then with that, that was the team. Lost in the quarterfinals. Trying to go all the way next season.